Ever wondered how a single man could swindle billions of dollars without anyone noticing? It's a question that boggles the mind, isn't it? But believe it or not, it's a scenario that's played out more times than you might think in the shadowy world of financial fraud. In our modern era, where transactions fly across the globe in the blink of an eye, financial fraud has become an unfortunate reality. It's a pervasive issue, one that has the power to reach into the pockets of the everyday individual and the corporate giant alike. And the impacts, well, they can be downright devastating. Imagine your life savings, your hard-earned nest egg, vanishing into thin air. That's the reality for victims of financial fraud. Now, when we talk about financial fraud, there's one name that stands out from the rest, a name synonymous with deceit, manipulation, and one of the largest financial frauds in history. That name is Bernie Madoff. A man of charm and charisma, Madoff was a wolf in a sheep's clothing. He was a master manipulator, a puppeteer pulling the strings in a grand destructive performance. His stage, the world of high finance, his act, a Ponzi scheme of such magnitude that it would send shockwaves through the financial world and leave countless victims in its wake. But how did he do it? How did he manage to pull the wool over the eyes of so many? And how did it all come crashing down? These are the questions that we'll be exploring as we delve into the life and crimes of Bernie Madoff. So, prepare yourself for a journey into the heart of darkness, into the world of a man who turned the financial world on its head. Because when it comes to the enigma of financial fraud, there's no better case study than Bernie Madoff. Buckle up as we delve into the life and crimes of Bernie Madoff. Born Bernard Lawrence Madoff in 1938, Queens, New York, Bernie's story begins much like any other. A son of two humble parents, Ralph and Sylvia Madoff, Bernie was the second child in a modest family. His father was a plumber, his mother a homemaker, and their life was as ordinary as it gets. Bernie attended Far Rockaway High School, where he showed an early knack for finance, often spending his lunch money on stocks instead of sandwiches. After his high school graduation, Bernie enrolled in the University of Alabama, but his time there was short-lived. After just one year, he transferred to Hofstra University in Long Island, where he studied political science. He graduated in 1960, but not before meeting his future wife, Ruth Alpern. Ruth, a fellow student at Far Rockaway and later at Queens College, would play a significant role in Bernie's life and ultimately, in his crimes. With his newly minted degree, Bernie set his sights on the world of finance. He took a job as a lifeguard and sprinkler installer to raise money for his first venture, Bernard L. Madoff Investment Securities LLC. Founded with a mere $5,000, this investment firm would later become the platform for his infamous Ponzi scheme. Despite the humble beginnings, Bernie quickly made a name for himself on Wall Street. His firm was one of the early adopters of computerized trading, and this innovation gave him an edge over his competitors. He was young, innovative, and ambitious. His charisma and wit were as sharp as his financial acumen, and he quickly climbed the ranks of the financial world. Yet beneath this facade of success, something darker was brewing. Madoff's ambition was not satisfied by legal means alone. His hunger for success, his desire for wealth, and his disregard for ethics set him on a path that would lead to one of the most significant financial frauds in history. Little did anyone know, this seemingly ordinary man was about to orchestrate an extraordinary fraud. In the mid-1960s, Bernie Madoff's star began to rise. Indeed, this was a period of significant growth and evolution for Madoff. He was no longer just a penny stock trader, he was becoming a force to be reckoned with in the financial world. Armed with an unyielding work ethic and a keen understanding of the market's intricacies, Madoff began to make waves in the finance industry. His firm, Bernard L. Madoff Investment Securities LLC, was gaining traction, successfully pulling in high-profile clients and managing millions of dollars in assets. Madoff was more than just a savvy trader, though. He was an innovator. He was one of the earliest adopters of computerized trading, a move that would revolutionize the finance industry. He recognized the potential of technology to streamline trading processes, and he harnessed it to great effect. This innovative approach caught the eye of the National Association of Securities Dealers, who appointed him as the chairman of the NASDAQ Stock Exchange, not once, but three times. His rise to prominence was nothing short of meteoric. Madoff's name became synonymous with success and innovation. He was a respected figure, a trusted advisor, and a leading voice in the finance industry. His firm was lauded for its seemingly consistent returns even during market downturns, 
but there was more to Madoff than met the eye. Behind the scenes, he was a master manipulator, exploiting the trust of his clients and the system to his advantage. His reputation and charisma helped him attract new investors, while his technical prowess allowed him to keep the illusion alive. And so, as Madoff's star ascended higher and higher, a darker plot was unfolding. Beneath the surface of his legitimate successes, a sinister scheme was brewing, one that would shock the world and forever tarnish his name. Little did anyone know, the man they admired was orchestrating one of the largest and most devastating financial frauds in history. But beneath the veneer of success, a darker plot was taking shape. The term Ponzi scheme may be familiar, but what does it really mean? A Ponzi scheme, named after Charles Ponzi who became notorious for using the technique in the early 20th century, is a fraudulent investing scam promising high rates of return with little risk to investors. The scheme leads victims to believe that profits are coming from legitimate business activity, when in fact they're simply the result of newer investors' money being used to pay off older ones. Now, how did Madoff manage to execute such a scheme on a massive scale? Well, he was able to convince thousands of investors to pour their money into his firm, promising steady high returns. Madoff's charm, coupled with his reputation as a financial wizard, made it easy for people to trust him with their hard-earned savings. He created an illusion of legitimacy by only accepting money from individuals introduced by trusted associates. This exclusivity made people feel privileged to invest with him. They were part of an elite club, and who wouldn't want to be in that club when it seemed to guarantee financial success? But here's the catch. Madoff wasn't investing that money. He was using new investors' money to pay returns to older ones, creating the illusion of a successful investment strategy. He sent detailed statements to his investors, showing their investments growing steadily, but these were all fabricated. The profits were non-existent. Madoff's scheme was essentially a house of cards. Each new investment was another card added to the structure, making it taller and seemingly more impressive, but also increasingly unstable. As long as new money kept flowing in, the house of cards stood tall. But the moment the influx of new money stopped, the entire structure would inevitably collapse. And so, Madoff's house of cards grew but it was only a matter of time before it would come crashing down. The year 2008 marked the beginning of the end for Bernie Madoff. The Wall Street titan who had been seen as a financial wizard was about to be unmasked as a fraudster on an unimaginable scale. The global financial crisis was tightening its grip and investors were clamoring to withdraw their funds, but the money wasn't there. Madoff's empire built on lies and deceit started to crumble his sons Mark and Andrew confronted him about the inconsistencies in the company's records. Under pressure, Madoff confessed to them that his investment firm was one big lie. The sons turned their father into the authorities, a move that would rip the family apart. The following day, on December 11, 2008, Madoff was arrested and charged with securities fraud. The truth was out. Madoff's Ponzi scheme, the largest in history, had been exposed. The world was shocked. This was not some fly-by-night scammer. This was a respected figure in the financial world, a former chairman of the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. The magnitude of his deceit was staggering. The numbers were almost incomprehensible. Madoff had defrauded investors of an estimated $65 billion. Thousands of people from ordinary retirees to celebrities and charities had lost everything. The fallout was immediate and devastating. Lives were ruined, retirements were shattered, and trust in the financial system was severely shaken. As the news spread, Madoff became the face of Wall Street greed and deceit. His luxury homes, his yacht, his lavish lifestyle, all funded by stolen money, were splashed across the media. The man who had once hobnobbed with the rich and powerful was now a pariah, a symbol of the dark side of capitalism. In June 2009, Madoff pleaded guilty to 11 federal felonies, and was sentenced to 150 years in prison, the maximum allowed. The judge called his crimes extraordinarily evil. His victims cheered as the sentence was read out. Madoff's empire had fallen, and the fallout was catastrophic. His crimes had revealed a darker side of Wall Street, one that was driven by greed and deception. The ripples from his fall would continue to be felt for years to come. The shockwaves of Madoff's crimes were felt far and wide. It wasn't just a ripple in the financial world, it was a seismic event that caused a massive upheaval in the lives of thousands and shook the foundations of the investment industry. 
In the aftermath of Madoff's Ponzi scheme, the devastation was palpable. It was a financial tsunami that washed away the life savings of countless individuals, leaving them to pick up the pieces of shattered dreams. From high-profile celebrities to everyday people, no one was spared. Families were torn apart, friendships were destroyed, and trust was irrevocably broken. The victims of Madoff's deceit were not just his direct clients. The fallout extended to the many charities and foundations that had invested with him. Their noble causes were dealt a cruel blow as they found themselves in financial ruins overnight. It was a sad irony that the very institutions that were built to help others were left helpless in the wake of this disaster. But it wasn't just the victims who bore the brunt. The financial industry, once seen as a pillar of stability, was now under a cloud of suspicion. The trust that investors had placed in the system was shattered. The question on everyone's mind was, how could this happen? It was a wake-up call for regulatory bodies worldwide leading to stricter oversight and regulations. Madoff's crimes also had a profound impact on his family. The shame and guilt led to tragic consequences, including the suicide of his eldest son, Mark. His wife, Ruth, was ostracized and left to live with the infamy of her husband's actions. The aftermath of Madoff's Ponzi scheme was a chilling reminder of the human cost of financial fraud. It marked a dark chapter in financial history, a story of greed, deception, and a betrayal of trust that left deep scars on its victims and the industry. The name Bernie Madoff had become synonymous with betrayal and deceit. His actions left a lasting imprint, a grim reminder of the perils of unchecked greed and the devastating consequences that can ensue. Bernie Madoff, once a respected figure in finance, had become its greatest villain. His tale doesn't end with the exposure of his crimes or even the collapse of his empire. Instead, it stretches into the dark corners of a prison cell where he spent the remainder of his days a shadow of his former self. Madoff was sentenced to 150 years in prison in 2009, the maximum penalty for his crimes. His once luxurious lifestyle was replaced with the harsh reality of confinement. He exchanged power suits for prison clothes, gourmet meals for cafeteria trays. His world, once filled with the hustle and bustle of Wall Street, was reduced to the silence of a prison cell. But it wasn't just Madoff's life that changed drastically. His crimes shook the world's trust in financial institutions to its core. Overnight, the perception of Wall Street transformed from a beacon of opportunity to a den of thieves. The public's faith in the system was shattered, and the shockwaves of his deceit are still felt today. Even after his death in April 2021, Madoff's legacy lives on in the form of skepticism and caution. His actions have led to stricter regulations and increased scrutiny of financial institutions. His name has become synonymous with fraud, a cautionary tale whispered in the halls of finance and law. Yet amidst the chaos and destruction, there is a silver lining. Madoff's downfall has ushered in a new era of financial accountability and transparency. His scandal has paved the way for reforms designed to protect investors and prevent similar occurrences in the future. Bernie Madoff's tale serves as a chilling reminder of the destructive power of greed and deceit. His crimes have left an indelible mark on the world of finance, a stain that will forever remind us of the potential for darkness within the pursuit of wealth. In the wake of Madoff's crimes, what lessons can we learn? Well, firstly, vigilance is key. Every investor, big or small, needs to keep a watchful eye on where their money goes. It's not enough to simply trust the name or reputation. Secondly, transparency is crucial. Financial institutions and professionals should operate in a manner that's open and comprehensible. Complex, convoluted transactions often hide underlying dishonesty. Accountability is the third pillar. Regulatory bodies must be empowered and proactive, capable of holding everyone to account, regardless of their stature in the industry. In response to Madoff's actions, steps have indeed been taken to bolster these principles. Stricter regulations have been implemented oversight bodies have been strengthened, and there's a stronger emphasis on financial literacy for the everyday investor. These measures, however, are just the beginning. Continuous refinement and enforcement are necessary to prevent such a catastrophic fraud from reoccurring. As we remember Bernie Madoff, let his story serve as a cautionary tale for generations to come.